Okay, in physics we have many curves like this, but what we actually prefer is straight lines. The reason for this is we get more information from the straight lines. So naturally the equation of a line which you would have learned to maths, y equals, equals mx plus c, is very useful. The m stands for the gradient, the change in y divided by the change in x, and it can it's going to be anything really. In physics we can, uh, as what do we plot on the x-axis, we can plot pressure, temperature and so on. The number that multiplies it is going to be our gradient, normally some kind of constant that we're trying to find. And then secondly, we have the y-intercept, the thing that's being added on. So normally, again, different constant this time. And that we can just get from reading the axis here. Okay, so to figure, figure out the gradient, we normally to use the biggest possible triangle to reduce the percentage uncertainty we have when we are calculating our gradient. Okay, so I've got this circuit here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the load resistance. Now this is a result in the current going up. Also the terminal voltage actually decreased. Why is that? Because of the internal resistance. When the current goes up, there's more lost PD. So the terminal voltage decreases. So what I want to do with this data is, I know this is the equation, I want to plot a graph. So I'm going to compare it to the equation of line, which because the line is going to be the most useful type of graph to plot because the gradient and the intercept can be used. I want to rewrite this equation in a slightly more useful way. You'll see why in a minute. Okay, so my y-axis, if I plot V, the terminal voltage, on my x-axis, if I plot the current, let's look at what the M and C is. So the thing that multiplies the current is negative of the internal resistance. So our gradient is going to be negative of the internal resistance. Our intercept, the thing that's being added to this, is the EMF. So from this graph here, plotted on the axis of terminal voltage against current, the y-intercept is going to be my EMF. So my EMF is 1.4 volts. And if I take the gradient, I'm going to use these two values here at the very end. Okay, so y2 minus y1, so it's going to be 0 actually, minus 1.4 divided by 2.5 minus 0. And the change there, or the gradient there, is actually negative 0.56. Okay, so my that means my so that's going to be negative or so my internal resistance is going to be 0 0.56 ohms. Okay, so to, to summarize, if we plot terminal voltage against current, our gradient is going to be negative of the internal resistance, and our y-intercept is going to be the EMF. Okay, in this question, we've been given a terminal voltage against current graph, and we're asked to figure out the EMF and the internal resistance. So I know from my argument last time that the y-intercept here is going to equal the EMF. And if this is 1.1 here, that means this is going to be approximately 1.52 or 53, basically. Okay, just reading and using the scale there. Okay, the internal resistance or the negative of the internal resistance is going to be the gradient. So the gradient here, I'm going to use the whole axis and you want to try to use a large of um, as much of the graph as you can to figure out your gradient. So the change in y is going to be 0 minus 1.52 over the change in x, which is going to be this value, and if that's 3.5, and that's 3.75, it's approximately um, 3.63 minus 0 over here, equals 0 0.52, uh, 42, sorry, or negative. And so therefore, my internal resistance is 0 0.42 ohms. Explain why the terminal voltage decreases as the current increases. So as the current increases, we know there's going to be more energy lost due to the internal resistance. Okay, so if there's more energy lost due to the internal resistance, that means the lost PD is larger. Okay, if the lost PD is larger, the terminal voltage must decrease because together, the lost PD and the terminal voltage add up to EMF. Another argument you can make is that in order to increase the current, you need to be decreasing the total resistance. And the only way to do that is to decrease the load's resistance. So to increase the current, we need to decrease the load's resistance. Okay, that means, and the internal resistance hasn't changed. So that means that the internal resistance will get a larger ratio of the total EMF. Okay, and that the 
terminal voltage is going to be less because the load is receiving less of the EMF. The graph shows the terminal voltage against current graph for a cell. The cell is replaced with another cell which has half the EMF but the same internal resistance. Add a line to the graph to show how the terminal voltage against current would differ for this cell. So firstly, we know that the gradient is the internal resistance and we've got the same internal resistance here. So the gradient is going to be the same. Half the EMF. Well, this one's got 1.4 EMF because that's the y-intercept. So if it's half, it's going to be 0 0.7. So it's going to be here. So if I draw a line, it should look a bit like this for the this here. So it's got this uh, half the EMF. So the intercept has gone down to half the value and the gradient being very careful here that it's the same. So I made it hit the x-axis halfway through as well. Okay, question B. The cell is replaced again with a cell which has the same EMF as the original one. Okay, same EMF as the original, so it's going to be up here, 1.4, but double the internal resistance. Okay, add another line to the graph to show how the results for this cell uh, would vary. Okay, so we've got double the internal resistance, so we expect the gradient to be times 2, to be steeper. Okay, so in this one here, so instead of what have we had, I think it was 0 0.56 is going to be a bit steeper. So it would look a bit like this. So instead of hitting here 2.5, it's going to get it halfway there. Actually, it's going to be around this point, actually 1.25. So that line should look a bit like that. So you can see here, same mindset, but steeper gradient.